this ball game, Stephen, did not see the White Sox offense do anything of note until the eighth inning against yet another subpar starter comparative to league average. They were able to handle this job in Cleveland, but they were unable to handle this job today. I don't understand it. Why is this such a roller coaster? Let's dive in. I mean, it's just the 2022 White Sox. This team has really been unable to sustain any kind of long-term quality offensive performance outside of like that first six to eight games of the season. And it really defies all logic in a lot of sense. You know, you go, you look at, they had, I think it was one, they had a scoring opportunity, I want to say in the fourth or fifth inning with Jose Abreu, uh, a guy who destroys the Detroit Tigers and doesn't get the job done. You have the sixth inning or Eloy goes up there, gets a leadoff double. They don't move him from there. Just terrible plate approach all night. And as I mentioned, as the game dragged on, Manning was making mistakes. He was missing with that fastball in the middle part of the plate, and they just were flat out missing pitches to hit. And it was ungodly frustrating. But we've seen this movie a lot this year, and it doesn't make it any easier to tolerate or to deal with. But it's just kind of one of those things where by the fourth, fifth inning, you're like, well, Looks like it's going to be one of those nights. And, you know, Len and Steven Stone were talking about how it was very similar to the game last Friday night in Oakland. And then they had the big ninth inning comeback. But can you really count on that happening that frequently, especially considering they had two of those? You know, you can even throw in that Luis Castillo start on the Wednesday in Seattle. So you had two of those last week. I mean, this team just hasn't shown an ability to do this with any kind of consistency all year. And you go two for 12 with runners in scoring position, you can win. This team is so much better when they score runs early and do this thing that we call hashtag set the tone, Steve. Um, you know, I, I, I appreciate the fight, but we've called it a hashtag fake rally pretty much all year. Able to scratch across two in the eighth, like we said. I thought that was an impeccable, just awesome at bat from Abreu that got him, you know, the 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 two RBIs there and ties the ball game. But you need more than that in a baseball game to win. The Sox just seemingly couldn't figure it out how to break through, how to do that. Man, it kind of goes it kind of goes to some of the larger wider ranging issues that we have seen all year with the fact that this team doesn't have a sound plate approach. They don't take walks, they don't put a lot of pressure on the defense. Everyone wants to talk about, you know, not striking out as a way to put pressure on the defense. You put pressure on the defense first and foremost by having guys on base because you mm -hmm. can work counts. The the easiest way to put pressure on a team is to work the opposing pitchers kind of like how, you know, Detroit tonight did that and, you know, caused the White Sox starts on the record 14 outs. Well, and, and Steve, this is where I want to dive deeper into this and I'm not trying to cause issues here, but tonight was a prime example. I think a lot of people and, and, you know, potentially rightfully so the results under Miguel Cairo have been better than they have under Tony the Rooster this season in a very small sample size. But I felt like tonight was sort of that perfect example, at least to me, to say this is still the same team that you have watched all damn season. If we want to really get into what plagues this White Sox team, I think you're hitting the nail right on the head, Steve, and it's the inability to be opportunistic at the plate to do the smart thing to get a runner over and get them in to produce runs. Those are important. We've talked so many times about the long ball. Yeah, it's, it's easy to hit a long ball. 
right? That that, that just scores run. It's not easy, but it, it's easy offense. That's a great recipe for success. But if you're not going to do efficient that, efficient offense, I think is the word that you're. That's looking that's for. absolutely the word I'm looking for. But this is the same fucking team that you've watched all year. Yes, there are sparks of greatness. Yes, there's a reason why Elvis Andrews has been such a breath of fresh air into this ball club because he does those little things. He does, and even today there was still an example where a guy's going to get got. You saw him argue that call, even though it was blatantly right over the <laughs> right, right in the strike zone. But he's frustrated. You know why he's frustrated? Because he's been on the top of his game, and he got beat. So I can see that frustration level right there. But when you've got seven guys in your lineup, Steve, who just aren't feeling it at the plate and can't get the job done, you have a major problem. It's not the voice in the room. It's not the way that anything else is going outside of, this just doesn't feel right. There's no magic here when you're when you're sucking it up and you can't make things happen. Sometimes you have to make your own luck. A ground ball to the right side gets a runner over from second to third instead of striking out. It just the, those little things they have added up for this ball club over the course of this season, and it's been so detrimental. Because you see it in the body language of the team. You feel it when you go and you open up your phone and you look at Twitter.com and you see the people talking about it. There are so many things that have not gone their way that I feel like it's crept into even this ball club where you have a game like today and you can't scratch this one out. It's incredibly frustrating to watch.